Show. It's it's on Oh, it's cold outside. Yes, in Houston, Texas, it actually was 20 degrees last night. And I think up in Conroe, it was 19. We're looking at some sleet and uh, what do they call it? A wintry mix. It's a great day to have a Jeep. Or it could be, if it actually turns out as they're predicting it's going to. Tonight, we have part one of a two-part interview with Rini Argonard and he had to teach me how to pronounce both those words uh, both those names Argonard is his um, username on xjtalk.com mine is Motoroy my first name is Tony I'm one of the very few Tonys on the site I think I was the only Tony in in high school of about uh, 1,000 students and no, it's not Anthony. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with the standard, um, the standard model that we've been using, which is basically to have the interview for the first half of the show, and the second half we'll have Rini on the phone answering your questions, if you should have any, and. Uh, We can always take comments or talk about something totally different. Uh, You'll be in the chat room. Rini and I will be on the air. The stream. I guess the stream. I don't think I'm centered in the camera. I turned it up right when it was over. It's not very professional. This segment is brought to you by Iron Man 4x4, the toughest, most adjustable control arms in the industry. Iron Man 4x4 has a wide variety of rugged off-road suspension products that are overbuilt and underpriced. Visit IronMan4x4Fab.com today. That's IronMan4x4Fab.com. Wow, could I be any whiter in this picture? I mean, look at that. That's really bright. Oh well. Too late to mess with it now. XJTalk.com. XJTalk.com. It's where you go when you're not off road. Since I've actually learned how to control myself and watch the time on these interviews uh, that are uh, recorded uh, <laughs> that are recorded before the uh, before the actual uh, live show. So I guess it's semi semi live semi live if we're uh, playing a recorded interview. It's kind of good that way. It's uh it's less stressful. Uh, both uh, the interviewee and I can uh, interact with the chat room, and it, you know, I just think it's more fun for everybody. Um, just looking here at the chat room, we've got uh, several XJ Talk members, one XJ Talk vendor. Welcome, everyone. Everyone, we've got a couple of guests, and you know who you are. Um, one of these days, I'm going to read what this uh, number of viewers means on my. On my screen, it says number of viewers seven slash twenty five. I like the twenty five. Well, I like the seven, but the the twenty five is a bigger number. So I don't know know exactly if that means that there's actually twenty five people that have been here and left, or you know, I don't know. It's just confusing. So uh, as uh, as I was mentioning, it's very cold here in Houston. I think it, let's see, it is 30 degrees now. I think we had a high of around 34 today. And if you're not familiar with the Houston area, that's kind of unusual because the temperature, you know, it may get cold at night. Very rarely is it in the 20s, but, you know, 28, 29, 30, 32, somewhere like that. But it'll usually warm up during the day to at least 40-something. 
and sometimes even go as high as in the 60s. So it's it's pretty it's pretty comfortable in the in the winter time as compared to some of the other places that I uh, see and hear about around the country. So the um, it's very unusual for us. It's, it's, it's even unusual for us to get any kind of um, frozen uh, participation participation precipitation and we're looking at that uh, tomorrow so um, I'm I'm personally kind of uh, interested in seeing what's going to happen because uh, I think it'll be fun I just I don't want to do anything that might uh, bend the Jeep but at least I have one so it'll be a little easier getting from point A to point B because of that do you have questions or comments that you would like played on the air we've set up voicemail just for that purpose all you have to do is call 530-675-4102. Just leave your name, your location, and your question or comment. Chances are good it'll get played on the air. That number again is 530-675-4102. We look forward to hearing from you today. Hey, how would you like to advertise on XJ Talk Talk Show and reach a worldwide Jeep audience? Just send an email to advertise at xjtalk.com for more information. And here we go with uh, part one of the Rini interview. Hey guys, thanks for joining us tonight with XJ Talk uh, Show. Tonight we have uh, Rini uh, Argonard uh, from the xjtalk.com website. Rini, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. A little you. cold, which wasn't this morning, but, or I guess it wasn't yesterday morning. Yeah, that was a heck of a blast that we had come uh, come through here. Of course, the show is uh, is on Wednesday. We're recording this on Tuesday, and uh, Tuesday morning here in the Houston area, we had a um, a very substantial cold front come f- come through. Quite a uh, quite a line of showers and wind. Gosh, I guess we were seeing 40, 50 mile an hour winds here in gusts. Yeah, that's what they were saying on the news this, uh, today is it was actually, it was gust up to 40 miles an hour here. And I, I actually had took the girls down to the uh, to the bus stop because it was uh, still raining uh, about 6.40 or so when they went to catch the bus. So um, it was uh, it was loud enough to wake me up this morning. I guess you had been up for a while because I think you're usually on the site by five or so a.m. Yeah, I was, um, <clears throat> I had actually got up about four o'clock this morning is when it woke me up. But yeah, I kind of stayed up until six and it was still raining when I left to go to work this morning at about 7.15. So yeah, it was a heck of a blast. And for all of everybody who doesn't know, we're all in the Houston area, or me and Tony are, and we don't experience massive cold here. We generally never see. What we're going to see over the next three or four days, we don't get here in this part of Texas. I mean, we're, they're talking temps down in the 20s, low 20s. I think in Conroe is going to be, you know, may, we may even see some teens. That's not something we get in southeast Texas. No, that has to be a pretty pretty strong front <clears throat> to, to be able to get us down that cold for any time frame. Um, so, you know, we'll have... Uh, 30s, upper 20s on occasion, but uh, generally speaking, it uh, about when the sun comes out and daytime heating, you know, it warms up um, well above 30, maybe into the 40s. So, for example, today, the um, I don't think we got above 35 or 38. If I was, if I remember the um, looking at the little temp thing on my uh, computer, it uh, monitors it um, monitors the temp at my house. <clears throat> Right now it says 28. But anyway, uh, that kind of dovetails into the the next thing I was going to do is uh, talk about what you do for a living. You get to uh, work outside in this cold, don't you? Yes, I do. But I only actually get to, I'm actually in a a big metal building, you know, like a lot of the other guys. I'm actually a mechanic by trade, Um, graduated from UTI back in 89. Um, I've went on to own my own auto repair shop. I've uh, worked for multiple dealerships, multiple independent people. Um, I've kind of pretty much done it all. I'm actually to the point where in my in my life and in my career where I decided that I just really didn't want to work on uh, cars and trucks any longer. So I went 
I started working on electric vehicles, which is a little bit of a different job, but it's still something that's really interesting. And the greatest part of it is not everybody calls you every minute of the day going, I need to drive that home tonight. <laughs> Nobody needs to drive their electric vehicle home. And when you say electric vehicle, a uh, golf cart comes to mind. Is it is it golf carts or just golf courts, carts or more than that? We actually work, uh, we actually sell everything from a golf cart up to a, a, a 14 pass bus that actually gets used to transport people around parking lots and stuff. So we actually sell it all. Everything from, you know, like I said, golf carts to street legal vehicles to lifted golf carts, you know, off road type buggies to big buses and utility carts. And we even have a catering electric vehicle. So, yeah, pretty much anything and um, anything and everything that's electric, I, I work on. So, yeah. Have you uh, looked at ever, or have you considered um, taking a, uh, a Jeep Cherokee and using the the knowledge and perhaps the electric motors that you have available to to convert one into an electric uh, Jeep? Yes and no. Yes, because it would be really neat. No, because the weight of the batteries that it takes to run these things is ridiculous. Even if you were to do that, you'd never be able to wheel it. I mean, you're, you'd add couple thousand pounds just in batteries yeah i actually wrote on my uh tony mcelroy blog about uh we need a a better power supply because uh if we had a smaller uh, more powerful uh, battery or power power source it would really enable us to do a lot of things that we can't do now currently and um, i'm sure we'll get there i just uh, i just don't know when I was a kid, I thought we would be there by now. I mean, it is the 21st century, and gosh, we're 11 years into it. You know, we're actually getting close, Tony, but we're not quite there yet. Um, the the new Nissan Leaf is actually using a lithium polymer battery of some shape, form, or fashion. They are not they're not being real generous with the technology because they don't want it copied. I mean, blame them, but uh, you know, we're getting there. It's just wind, right? Well, it's a price performance thing. I mean, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that uh, the military um, or some scientist someplace has a nuclear reactor that's small, and uh, they could slap uh, Mister Fusion on the side of it, and it would operate much like the uh, the mythical uh, fusion device that powered the uh, DeLorean on Back to the Future. But um, as far as uh, you know, it being safe and affordable, it might be. Um, and besides that, it'd be a great terror terrorist tool. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. So I guess that would. The, the, in other words, the technology does exist for uh, limitless power, but the problem is the danger and the cost. So we need something that, like like what you're saying. I mean, the lithium batteries certainly were a big jump in technology. Uh, I mean, you can look at your smartphone <clears throat> that you're talking on. Of course, that has a lithium-ion battery. And the size and power of the thing are, are just incredible. I mean, a, a, a communication device that, that is that small, and of course, they can make them even smaller, but at some point, you have to, um, I think, draw the line as far as how small it's going to be or you wind up losing it. It was funny that you say that because my son got a, a iPod for Christmas, one of the iPod Touches, one of the newest ones with the, I don't know, 15 billion gigabytes of memory or whatever the heck it is now. And that thing is not a whole lot bigger than a credit card and probably as thick as four, maybe five credit cards. It's tiny. I, you see, I'm, I'm like you. I would end up losing it or breaking it very quickly. Yeah, breaking it. I could see <clears throat> that happening. And he probably will, too. He'll probably stick it in his pocket or leave it in there and it'll get washed or something. And those things are <laughs> so expensive. Yeah, apparently you know my son. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how kids are. <clears throat> so yeah, I do unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, are you from this area, or uh, what part of the country are you from? I was originally born up in Massachusetts, but I've lived here since 1974. So I'm, you know, basically born and raised. You know, not born, but raised right here in Conroe, Texas. I've oh, okay. lived here most of my life. Graduated high school right here. You know, everybody I know is here. Well, certainly if you've been here longer than 20 years, you're uh, considered a native Texan. I'm sorry, there's two things. You have to be here 20 years and not live in Dallas. 
Yeah. Well, I pretty much uh, do both of them. <laughs> I've been out of high school, 25 now, I guess. No, 84. Yeah, you recently yeah, celebrated 20. a birthday, didn't you? Yes, I did. Just turned 45. Nothing wrong with that. No. It's um, definitely, definitely um, feeling it a little bit. Now, I know we've talked about this before, but I, I do not remember. I guess it's because of um, um, there's so many people on the site now, and I, I'm reading about so many different things that uh, people have done. The Jeep Cherokee that you currently have, it's a 92, correct? Five. 95? Okay. For some reason, I thought it was a 92. I actually gave you some information today that was for a 92, that, that uh, water pump that you were talking about. But anyway... Is this is this your first Jeep Cherokee? First Jeep of any kind, believe it or not. I've had four wheel drive since I was eighteen years old, of one shape, form, or another. I've had Chevys, Ford, Dodges, you know, a couple different uh, Japanese brands. But this is my actual very first Jeep. Well, you seem to like it a lot. I mean, uh, you don't seem to be fearful of breaking it. No, fearful of breaking it is something I'm definitely not. <laughs> Was that something that you, similar driving style on your other vehicles? Oh, no, I was never as hard as I am on this one. I had a, well, I say that, I had a 1974 F100 Ford pickup, and it was an ex-Baja race truck, full cage, I mean, just crazy amount of suspension travel, but it was raced back in, like, it was a 74 model, and I think from the paperwork I had, it was raced in, like, 76. So it was bought and built to race immediately. It's been, you know, it was around ever since, and I bought it from a guy who was probably the fifth or sixth owner of it, and it never had anything changed on it. It was still in exactly the way they raced it for him. Um, I was pretty hard on that one. I launched it off a couple of hills pretty good, and, but it was set up to do it, so it was, you know, I didn't mind doing it. Was that a, a two-wheel drive? Because I know a, a lot of times, those, especially those off, off-road racers, are set up for... Uh... Um, you know, the no axle or at least independent suspension if it's a four-wheel drive. Well, no, it was a, uh, it was a four-wheel drive. But it was, now mind you, it was a 74 and raced in 76. Oh, yeah. They were just, yeah, they were just basically putting good, you know, lift, kit, lift kits on them, you know, shocking them a bunch and racing them back then. Yeah, that's right. I, yeah, I did hear you say that and I didn't think about that. That probably is a more recent, uh, recent thing. I really don't follow the off-road racing um, that much. I just know that uh, I was a little surprised to see whenever they're doing the the Baja stuff that those are really two-wheel drives. And I think they do it simply cause so they can get over all the little humps and bumps, uh, whereas a straight axle would give them a hard time doing uh, being able to go fast. Yeah, I think that back then, I actually think that the two-wheel drives were actually faster than the four-wheel drives. You know, yeah. I, I'm sure Steve would probably know a little bit more about that than I would from him being in California and all. But if I remember right, way back then, they were actually, the two-wheel drives were the faster vehicles. Right. You know, more wheel travel, more everything, lighter weight, you know, same horsepower. Yeah, I think it's that independent front front, um, front suspension, so it allows, you know, one wheel to be on the ground and not be forced down by a bump. It They both can float at whatever rate or speed they need to that's uh right. i mean yeah I, I, you can do it with cv joints and uh so on and so forth but it's just not very strong it's not as strong as a straight axle setup <laughs> at least that's what i've been told so anyway you had a you've had several uh, four-wheel drives and um but the uh, the jeep cherokee is about the only one that you really beat the hell out of so you must have um have a or at least established a, a, a good confidence level in it uh, to be able to uh, to run it hard, I most certainly did. I actually, when I bought it, I mean, you you saw it when it was all original. I bought it bone stock. Probably had never been in four wheel drive its entire life. Um, I gave more than what I should have gave for it. Looking back now, but at that time I didn't know. Right. Um, I and everything that's been done to it, I've done myself. Um, you know, it's three and a half inch lift. 33-inch TSLs on it. Um, <coughs> you know, it's It's got a whole lot more to go in it, what I'm going to do to it, but I've just got to get to the point where it's not my daily driver. Right. 
It is. As a matter of fact, it is still my daily driver. Well, it's nice to be able to, um, in the Houston area, when we have bad weather, and we do have it, it's nice to um, be in a vehicle you know that can get you from point A to point B, or at least have a, a real good chance at it. Yeah, it is. You know, in the, our, our idea of bad weather is a lot different than what everybody is experiencing right now with the winter. We don't get that. We get, you know, 20 inches of rain over a 24-hour period. Right. So we just get lots of high water to drive through. Yep. Yeah, uh, having a little height makes a big difference. And um, the two feet bet- between the uh, the ground and the bottom of my Jeep uh, means a lot to me. Sure makes you a lot more confident in driving through that deep puddle, doesn't it? Yep. I mean, you know, standard pickup trucks uh, sit as high. Uh, the passengers or drivers sit just as high as I do. But the bottom of that door isn't isn't as high as mine. <laughs> so if they start going through it, they're going to get some water. It, it, I don't know how bad it would be, but at least I'm going to be above it. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And when I'm not above, I don't care if it gets in my floorboards anymore. <laughs> have you... Uh, <laughs> Have you put drain plugs in your uh, your floorboard now? Oh yeah, it's all my drain plugs have been removed. I ride around with them out all the time now. I don't even put them back in anymore. <laughs> yeah, you do need to get that thing set up so that you can just make it a an off road trail rig. Daily yeah, go- when that happens, I'm cutting the top off. I'll end up being one of the uh, uh, Cherokees that are topless. Well, I think that's the about the only thing about the Cherokee that um, would be nice, would be able to have the ability that the Wranglers and the CJs do to remove that top, because that is, that is pretty cool. I mean, it, it probably would get old, uh, old pretty fast. I had a, a, a Z28 with, a, with T-tops, and I thought that was a, a real fun thing, but keeping up with those uh, tops and taking them on and put them on off and uh, putting, them on, uh, putting them on, taking them off, and then um, worried, worrying about people stealing them, because that was a big thing. They were pretty expensive items, and they were fairly easy to steal. And uh, a lot of people would come out, and their T-tops would be gone. Yeah, that would make you pretty much not happy. No. I mean, you know, that that's a, the, it's, it's a selectable uh, open-air thing, and without the T-tops, it's, there's no longer a selection. And gosh, it seems like they were five $700 to replace, so wasn't something um, wasn't something fun to uh, to be concerned about no well, I'll give you that um, I actually had a 68 Mustang that kind of the same boat I mean it wasn't a t-top car but you still I mean locking up the 68 Mustang is really the most non-intelligent thing you could ever do you know it takes a long time to get in one of them cars yeah I guess a lot of anything with class on it doesn't really take much to uh, to get into but um, now, and I, I would guess the the Wranglers are in that same position with the uh, with the soft tops. I guess you just uh, don't put stuff in there that you want people to walk off with. That's it. You know, I mean, it's kind of like anything, though. No matter how secure your vehicle is, how long would it take to get in there with a hammer? Yep, or even take it. And of course, yeah, well, that, and of course, that's a worry that I have because I've um, I've had this uh, Jeep Cherokee of mine since um, you know it was brand new, showroom floor, and I've done a lot of mods to it. And um, actually, every time I hear about somebody having um, their their Jeep totaled, I think about you know where am, where am I going to be if that happens? I mean, chances are good I'll be able to pull parts off of it, but it's not you know it'll be gone, and. Um, Actually, I was looking at that um, that flood damaged uh, XJ that's at Matt's shop, and I kept saying stuff to him like, "Man, but the body's clean and and blah 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 blah." I just hate to see this thing trashed, and uh, it's like, you know, yeah, but salt water, yeah, but it's out of year, yeah, but <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, it's true. And what's really bad about that car or that that Jeep? Was it was under salt water and the floorboards are perfect. There's not a rust hole in that Jeep anywhere. Yeah, it's just really sad because that is a, a very clean Jeep. And um, gosh, I, I mean, I guess it wasn't running, and that's why somebody left it there and they didn't care. But boy, that would have been nice if somebody would have just called and said, "Hey, 
I got a Jeep. It's gonna it's gonna get uh, swamped with this uh, hurricane coming in. You want it? Believe it? Yeah, believe it or not, I know the story behind that Jeep. Oh, really? What happened? That Jeep was actually bought. The guy that we got it from had actually bought it from a friend of his, and it was an off road buggy only. You know that they didn't. He never got it titled. You know he had the title, but he never got it inspected or registered. And when the hurricane was coming in, they loaded up. You know he has a pickup truck, and his wife had a car. They loaded everything in their house on a trailer that he had behind his truck, and there was just nowhere to put the Jeep. He had no choice but to leave it. And it was running. Oh yeah, it was running driving at that point, but there was no way for him to get it out. He had to drive his truck with the trailer. She drove her car out. There was just no, and he said by the time they left, there was not enough time to get back. Because he actually said, he goes, I turned, you know, when I got the trailer unloaded, I turned around and started coming back, and he couldn't get back to his house. Mm. Well, um, I'm glad I asked about that, because that makes me feel a little better about it. It just seems strange that it was such a nice Jeep. I figured it must not have been running, and, and therefore it was just too difficult to get to get out of there. Uh, that's just a shame. Yeah, it really is, because like you said, it's a really, really nice Jeep. I mean, I, I hate to see it cut up and you know be thrown away, but that's pretty much what's going to happen. Yeah, well, it's understandable. Uh, it, it's all it's all relative to how much work and money it it, it takes. Let's you know, like uh, like Matt said, uh, two hundred bucks you can get a rollover and uh, be a lot further along than what you'd be on that one. You really can because that Jeep is just so beat to death, or, or not beat to death, but the Jeep is so salt water to death that there's almost nothing salvageable right but that's the way it goes at least um, there's uh, going to be some stuff taken off of it and uh, it'll live on so to speak the um, I've just uh, developed a, a real love for the uh, the Jeep Cherokee it um, just amazes me how how well they go off-road how well they go off-road stock and um, with um, just a little bit of uh, um, money investment and in <clears throat> lift tires and wheels it makes an amazing difference in the way they they appear you know it's funny you say that Johnny I was talking to a couple of guys on the site last night on chat and we were actually talking about that and I said you know if y'all want to really embarrass some people with your little Cherokee that stock Put some decent 30-inch tires on it, put a locker in the rear, and ditch your sway bars. You're going to make a whole lot of big Jeeps real jealous. Yeah, I don't do that. I mean, a locker would make a huge difference. I remember the very first time I met you, we were wheeling at Spring Creek. I was locked, no sway bars, and like 235 tires. Yep. And look at the places I was taking mine. And your Jeep was full of uh, family as well. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> you were going, <laughs> you were going up places. I remember there was a, uh, I think it was a TJ, that was in that one spot. Um, it, it was a really tight, um, tight trail, um, and it was a pretty good steep angle, and it was a turn. And he sat up there and tried it and tried it and tried it, and I don't know what eventually happened to him. I think he backed down out of there, and then uh, then you decided to go up there and try that, and. Uh, uh, you made it once or twice. I can't remember. I know you made it once. I, I'm, I'm with you. I think I made it twice, but I tried the third time and it just couldn't get up it. It did got rid, just too rutted out that I was actually a high center and going up it. Right, and that's that was my first uh, introduction to um, I wanted to say selectable locker, an automatic locker, and I was just really surprised how loud that that clicking noise was. Well, that's the reason I took it out and welded it. <laughs> yeah, Matt was um, Matt was backing up, backing your Jeep up the other day, and <clears throat> um, gosh, what was it? Oh, I thought the the uh, parking brake was set because the rear wheel was doing something really funny. It was jerking, and it was almost like it was trying to, like the, the emergency brake was on, and it was trying to stop and not go, and and uh, I said, emergency brake, and he looked down, he goes, you know, like, no. And I thought to myself, oh, that's right. He's got the, uh, Rini's got that uh, that Dana 35 welded together, and that's what it's doing. Because Matt was kind of turning as he backed, was backing up. So 
one wheel was trying to catch up with the other one. That, that's yeah, kind of, that's kind of funny because my Jeep is exactly what everybody says you can't do with them. You can't weld the Dana 35s, they, they'll break, backing out of your driveway. I've got a <laughs> welded Dana 35 with 33-inch TSLs, which are almost 34 inches tall, um, no sway bars, and drive it every day. You know, my Jeep is living proof that everybody, you know, that, now, mind you, it's also, it, it has a huge, depending on how you drive, I'm not, I'm hard on it, but I know when to let off. And also, we don't have any hard surfaces. You know, we don't have rocks here. I mean, I wish we did, but we don't. Our idea of the hills and overpass, you know, I, I think in the mud, in trail-type situations, weld them up. You're not, I mean, if you break it, everybody says it's a throwaway rear end anyway. What do you care? Right. Well, like I was telling you that day, uh, Saturday, when we were out there at Matt's shop, the the problem that I have with it is the thought of having to repair it um, out, out on the trail. Um, it's bad enough doing it in my garage. But you've got an eight and a quarter that you've got lined up uh, to, to go in there now, don't you? Yeah, I sure do. I actually have an eight and a quarter with a lunar slip diff. So, yeah, that's my um, that would be my next upgrade. And um, and that is the, the higher spline count one? You know, I don't know. I haven't pulled an axle and looked yet. Okay. But the catch is, whatever it is, it's going to be stronger than the 35. And everybody says that the 27 spline isn't, you know, but just a little stronger than the 35, but not as strong as the 29 spline. Look how long my supposedly not being able to back out of the driveway 35 has la- lasted. Right. Well, actually, I think that what the, the way it goes is if you put a non-stock size tire on a Dana 35, it explodes on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can prove I can prove that uh, that uh, myth really wrong, can I? <laughs> well, also too, I think that the uh, the other urban myth or, or Dana thirty five myth is is that sometimes they work <laughs> and sometimes they don't, and most of the time they don't. Of course, you know you, we've seen the uh, uh, the YouTube videos with the the Wrangler uh, in the hole uh, going in that little mud hole, and he's coming up the other side, and you hear that thing let loose. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe it was a little too much skinny pedal the the, you know, the ten times before, or you know, you know, I don't know what the magic is. But uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. We don't know how that Jeep was treated to begin with. Yeah. And the younger the uh, the younger and more less experienced the driver, I'm sure also has something to do with it. I mean, you know, if, oh, yeah. if all you know is the is the bottom of the the floor pan with the uh, with the accelerator. There's no telling what you've stretched or what you've um, damaged that it continues to work, but just you know it's waiting for the right moment. So um, I think it's I think it's pretty clear though that the the Dana 35 isn't as strong an axle as some of the other Danas. But then again, it was engineered for a um, a light vehicle and not engineered for um, a heavily modified uh, vehicle. And and even though it's fairly easy to put a lift on and, and put larger tires. That is a pretty extensive modification as far as torque uh, to that axle and, and the rest of the vehicle. Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. Um, we all know that you know, driving style has a lot to do with how long something lives. Um, but I think that in moderation, I think you're probably fine running what I'm running. But then again, like I said, we don't have hard surfaces that we wheel on. You know, we don't have rocks. We don't have stuff like that. You know, with rocks and stuff, I can see where they just wouldn't live long. I mean, I'm already, even with what the wheel and I've done with mine, I've already noticed some um, really funny characteristics of what my Jeep's doing now that it wasn't doing before. If you actually jack the rear end up, I could take one wheel and turn it about an eighth of a turn before the other wheel starts turning. So I know I'm getting some slack in parts that shouldn't ever have slack with a welded diff. Right. <clears throat> well, that's going to happen. I mean, there's stress and things moving and so on and so forth. I think uh, I think one of the, I can't remember exactly the way it is that Big Jim puts it, but there's there's something he talks about uh, on, on one of the other sites about how you have to have it, uh, I don't know, uh, Dana 60s and 35-inch uh, tires before you can back it out of the driveway. 
<laughs> that kind oh, of, you, you forgot the Warren Winch. You forgot the Warren Winch. <laughs> the Warren Winch. <laughs> and and I think that's a I think that's a habit a lot of us get into because it's a it's a formula that we know. Um, you need this. You need this. 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 And this. And it's really easy to tell people whenever they're new and they say, "Hey, what do I need to do to my Jeep?" And if you get right down to it, what they probably need to do the, to their Jeep is enjoy it. Tow, uh, oh. what not not tow hooks, um, recovery points. And you know, if you can put a winch on there, then you can get yourself out of a lot of stuff. So that probably is the 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 main things that anybody needs to to focus on is recovery points and a winch. And the rest of it is just more augmentation of your ability to get up and over things with ease. Uh, and, of course, it looks really cool. Yeah, well, I'm 100% with you on that. I mean, you know, one thing the Jeeps do not have at all, or you know, at least our Cherokees, is recovery points. We really, you know, as far as recovery points, if you ain't got a hit, you have no recovery points. Um, I agree with you. Put recovery points on it. Um, you know, if you have a rear sway bar and a stock Cherokee, ditch the rear sway bar. There's no reason for that in the world. Um, put some sway bar disconnects on it if you don't want to. If you don't feel confident about losing the front sway bar, and go wheel it. Go enjoy it. Use it for what it was meant for. Go get it dirty and then go park it in the grocery store or on the mall and let people look at you like you're retarded, because that's what they're that's what they're meant to do. This is Big Jim 350, and I f***ing love XJTalk.com. Except when the server's having problems, right, Jim? And then it's uh, not so much. Well, that's uh, the end of part one of the interview with Rini. We uh, tried to trim it down to um, 30 minutes, and we did a pretty good job of uh, taking the taking the break. It's amazing what you can do when you actually pay attention to the the time on the clock. So that means part two will be next Wednesday, uh, barring any kind of uh, virus, malware, freezing precipitation, I gotta quit saying that word, uh, snow, sleet, um, rolling blackouts, um, you know, uh, political unrest like they're having in Egypt, uh, you know, anything can happen, I suppose. But anyway, if none of that happens, then uh, next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Central, well, part two of the uh, interview with Rini, and we'll get a little more into things about his uh, bumper, the uh, various iterations that it uh, went through, and uh, how it uh, became green. I saw that there was a, a question about that in the chat room. Um, I like the green. I think that's uh, it. Really stands out. Really makes it. Uh, uh, really makes it pop. Uh, it's like, look at me and get the hell out of the way. Pink would be good. Um, I I look forward to seeing that on your on your vehicle, Wayne. So let's get uh, let's get Rini on the phone so we can uh, ask questions. Somebody's calling. Somebody answer the damn phone. It's an XJ Talk live phone call. Hey, Rainy, you there? I'm here. Yeah, Wayne, you definitely got to paint your bumpers pink. <laughs> pink and green go great together, man. That's true. It really does. Uh, that's kind of a Barbie color uh, combination, isn't it? Oh, he drives a Jeep. Barbie has a Jeep. Why not paint them pink, right? Oh, but it's not a it's not a Cherokee though. It's it's got to be a Wrangler, you know, because uh, oh, that's right. Chicks with square headlights. I think hers has square headlights. Chicks dig the uh, the Wranglers. Nothing wrong with that. Wranglers are nice. It's just not. I guess Wayne's not going to comment on that, huh? Well, I guess not. Um, well, he's a very, very long ways away. It may take a long time for those bits to actually get here. And also, too, there's uh, probably a bit of a delay between when we're saying it and we he when, when he's hearing it. Oh, uh, true. Pink, that means you're supporting. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, <clears throat> Rini uh, Argonard from uh, xjtalk.com, also one of our moderators, 
is uh, live and in color on the phone and willing and able to answer your questions and fend off your comments. So you guys got any questions? I think um, there you no, go. No, I am not a smoker. So no, no to the detours question, is Rini a smoker? I'm 45 years old and have never smoked in my entire life. Uh, so I'm not a quitter. I never started. <laughs> nope, no dipper either. No tobacco of any shape, form, or fashion. Does, uh, does your son uh, use any tobacco products? Not the young one, but the older one. Um, yeah, the older one does, but it's funny because my mom and dad both did, but I never did it, so. Yeah. I always had better things to spend my money on. Oh, God. It is very expensive. Um, my, uh, my dad was a smoker uh, from age 16 till five years before his death uh, from lung cancer, so uh, I never, never wanted to do it and never did. Lizard uh, oh, lizard geez. runner says smoking that usually means you need a ring ring job doesn't ring it? Ring job doesn't it? Yeah. If you can talk her into a ring job, what the hell? Yeah, I think she's trying to talk me into a ring job. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, sm- the the cough going on, Mark. What that is? Th- that is called allergies. Everybody in Texas has allergies, except me. None of it bothers you, Tony? Uh, the only way I was uh, somewhat aware of it, um, my wife gets the allergies really bad twice a year, and I kind of noticed that I have a little tickle in my throat when it's really, really bad. And um, that's, uh, but before, if it, if it hadn't been for her, I would have noticed it. It's called cold weather. Yeah, oh, that's something we're not used to. Boy, it is really cold. I've got the ceiling fan on but simply because I think I'm used to having some airflow on me, but I did have to turn it down a bit. Uh, and my feet are cold. I've got socks on, so it's, uh, it is it is very cold. Let's see. What's it down to? It is now 30 degrees in Katy, which is about um, 20 miles west of Houston, Texas, downtown Bright Lights. Yeah, I'm about 45 miles uh, north of Houston. And they're talking here, we may never see above freezing tomorrow. Yeah. So we, we may actually, that's why they say if it snows, we're getting snow, and we're also going to have sticking snow. I want to I see four-foot snow drifts. Uh, the most snow I've ever seen is five inches. I don't know. No outlaw. No outlaw. The, the outlaw XJ asked, Tony, are the majority of members in or around the Houston area? <clears throat> no, they're not. Uh, they're the Houston members are really relatively recent. Um, the majority of the members were all, uh, you know, scattered across the United States and international members. Wayne, for example, Cantab uh, twenty seven, he's in New Zealand. Um, we have a uh, a member that recently subscribed to, uh, as a paid subscriber to our site is on, in Mongolia. So it's a it's a worldwide uh, membership, and uh, we actually started doing some um, uh, local meet and greets uh, in the Houston area, and I think that got a few people um, from the Houston area together and on the site. And uh, it, it's not a club; it's not a local thing. Yeah. It's very much a a, a national, worldwide uh, site for anybody that has a Jeep Cherokee or just wants to be a part of it. Uh, you know, it doesn't you don't you don't have to have a jeep to join, right? And something I think part of why everybody thinks it's kind of more of a Houston-based thing is because a lot of us Houston area people are very involved in the site. Yes. You know, I mean, that's one of these. You know, uh, it, it's kind of one of the things where a lot of us, Big Jim, me, um, uh, oh, who the heck's the other one? Big Jim, me. There's Patrick. Um, Was it PCR Jeep? PCR Jeep. Ms. Uh, Ms. Morenberg. Matt. Yeah, Matt. Um, 
there's a whole lot of us that are local that are on there a lot, and we're the, a lot of the ones doing a lot of chatting on there. So I think that's why everybody really thinks that we're more of a Houston-based fight, and we're not. It, it's not ever meant to be that. It's just we happen to be the most talkative of the bunch on there, I guess, besides Wayne, and then he's the furthest away. And by the way, for all of y'all on here, if you don't know, if you want to know the, uh, if you want to know the lot of numbers, just ask Wayne. He's tomorrow. That's right. Wayne is in the future. He's he's sworn an oath not to tell you if you're going to die, though. So don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, don't forget about Scott XJ Four IV. Yeah, you don't leave that one alone. <laughs> if you if you don't mention Scott, he's going to be upset. Oh yeah, yeah. Poor Scott. <laughs> of course, he doesn't make it to the show. Well, speaking yeah, of, by speaking the way, everybody who's listening, Scott was up in Waco, Texas. I mean, Waco, Texas, and he froze his Jeep so bad the water pump wouldn't turn the other day. So, yeah, it was pretty cold up there. He said it was 10 degrees with no wind chill. But hasn't he been meaning to change that um, that water pump since before the long arms? Oh, yeah, but he hasn't done it yet. Golly, I just I don't think I could drive that far on something that I knew was marginal. Yeah, me neither. I guess that's part of the adventure. What's going on there, Kurt? You need to put your feed back up. How much snow you get? See if you heard me. By the way, for I think most of y'all already know, but uh, Weldman is Kurt. Right. Eighteen inches of snow. My goodness. Wow. Yeah, Mark was uh, Mark commented uh, quite a while back in the char- chat room about you know you poor babies about having to deal with the uh, <laughs> the cold because <laughs> you know he's originally from uh, was it Connecticut, uh, Mark I think, and, and now he's in uh, in KY. So <laughs> he, <laughs> when I talk to him, uh, he, he he complains about the weather in Kentucky, but it's really not the cold; it's the storms, the severe storms. I don't think he's used to that. And, of course, we're more used to that in the Houston area, just not the uh, the cold. Yeah, you know what I really found out? Is it taking about three months before I'm a little sick of the 100-degree days, you know, the 90-plus degree days? About three months' time, I'm thinking, you know, I wouldn't mind a little bit of cool weather. But it takes me about 10 seconds to go, you know what? This shit can go back up north. This sucks. I, I can't handle the hot weather. I just... Uh... I really don't like it. I especially don't like the electric bills. So um, I'm a much happier person when it's cold. You know, when it, when it's cold like this, I can sleep under the covers. I don't ever sleep under the covers, but when it's cold like this, I can, and and I like that. Hey man, I just turned the AC down further. <laughs> my poor my poor girlfriend freezes her butt off in the summertime. I've got it like you can hang meat in the bedroom. Oh God, I bet you she does. What is she? All of ninety five pounds. Yeah, about ninety five pounds. She yeah. likes to say she's a hundred, but not quite. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I bet you uh, I bet you she gets cold quite easy. Yeah, she does. She just come in from work and she's like a little popsicle. <laughs> hmm But yeah, we're uh, uh should snow should be traveled to <laughs> not come to you, Rini. I agree one hundred percent. Big <laughs> Big Jim three fifty says, see all I just heard was KY. He wouldn't pay <laughs> He wasn't paying attention before. <laughs> well, I think he said it's cutting out on him. Well, that can happen, but you can always catch this, uh, catch the show in its uncut entirety um, from the podcast, which uh, is available on iTunes now, which is really cool. And it's really cool that it's free. And uh, also, too, on uh, from the, uh, the XJ Talk website, which... Uh, we were talking in the chat room. This will be old news, I'm sure, by the time some some people hear the podcast. But uh, we've been uh, we switched over from the old server, old underpowered server, to the new, more powerful um, oh. server, and we've been having some issues because anytime you make a major change like that, it doesn't quite go as what you would expect it to. So having some growing pains, but it'll get stabilized out here. Pretty damn quick. Yeah, when you were saying all that, the the new and improved server that doesn't work. No, it, from the it, old old crappy server that did work. By no, the way, it, <laughs> it it actually works great. It, it has to do with 
uh, how long the changes take to get out, pushed out to all the different internet service providers and the DNS uh, uh, equipment that's out there that each individual individual <coughs> uses. So it takes a while for all it, it get, get, for it all to get all pushed out. Hey, Punisher, where do you live at? I mean, I know you live in Florida, but what a part of Florida. If it's 78 degrees, where where the hell do you live at? That's surprising. I thought that front was, was all the way up the East Coast. I thought it was all the way down to, like, Miami. Port Charlotte, where is that at? It's in Florida. Yeah, I know it's in Florida. <laughs> what, what major city is that by, Punisher? A real good time in Tony. <laughs> Southwest. <laughs> so there's a city named Southwest. Where the hell is that? Southwest Florida, I think, is what he's saying. So down, kind of, exact opposite, two hours south of Tampa. Okay, I can, know where Tampa is. Thank you. Can you see the shuttle when it when it launches? Yeah. Can you see the shuttle? No, he could. He doesn't. The shuttle launch from the east side. He says, oh, no, yeah. He says, yeah. West side, I guess. Now, is it the okay. actual shuttle, or is it something you see when you drink? Yeah, golf side. So it does launch from the golf side. Yeah, east coast. Cape Canaveral, yeah. It goes goes east and downrange, so in case something happens, it falls in the water. Yeah. So, Punisher, you're about, what, halfway down the state, or three-quarters of the way down the state? I don't know if he's going to answer me. Yeah, he'll he'll, event, he'll yeah, he, answer question. eventually. You're what? If you, like, look at the state, are you like three-quarters of the way down there? Or are you like straight across from Miami? Whereabouts are you as far as two hours? Because I don't know how far, how long it takes to get from one end of Florida to the other. Yeah, he could boat over to Houston. He really could. Or at least Galveston. I don't know. I don't think you can get to Houston from the Gulf. But. Well, you just use a boat. Do I know across. where Fort Myers is? Yes, I do. I used to live in Miami, Punisher, so yeah, I know I know Florida a little bit. Thirty minutes north of it, okay. Yeah, I lived in Miami for two years before I moved to Florida. I mean before I moved to Texas. And uh, we went sw- we went swimming on Christmas Day and New Year's Day when we lived in Miami. Yeah, bad move especially today. Oh wait, check it out. Tony is officially from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see. <laughs> where, where he was saying Southwest, right? Oh, there's. Um, there's a, like a, if you, okay, if you there's over West. To get, you might hit an iceberg. I bet you we can find Punisher's house because this is Google Maps. Sarasota. Oh, it's Sarasota. Sarasota. Okay. So you're the right by Sarasota? No, I lost it. Oh, there it goes. I lost it again. That's all we needed, Paul's house picks. Port Charlotte. Oh, did you see it? Saw, uh, he, said he, he said he saw Port Charlotte. Are you, like, right on the coast, Punisher, or are you off the coast a little bit? You know, if he's right there. Port Charlotte. That's, oh, you just passed it. Right there where you see the 75, scroll back down, Tony. A little bit, a little bit. Down, down, down. Keep going down. Nope, the other down. Not up, down, Tony. Down, 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 down. To the Charlotte. right a little bit. There it is. See Port Charlotte? Just passed it. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, that's what it is, because there's a, a bit of a delay, because uh, I've actually been sitting still here for the last couple of seconds. Yeah, so you live in Port Charlotte, right? Hello. Oh, we need to get some pictures. That's going to be a really pretty place. Charlotte Harbor. Oh, if you put your... If you put your uh, Address up on there, we could probably tune into your house there. Punisher? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly what he wants. <laughs> so when, <laughs> when this is up on YouTube and, and everything else, people will be able to find it. <laughs> well, 
he's single. He wouldn't mind people coming looking, would you? <laughs> no comment. I love it. There we go. All right. Well, anyway, that's where uh, Punisher lives. So uh, that was a, a good uh, five minutes of the show. Oh, he just put it up there. Actually, put it in there. Twenty-one forty-seven Shiloh Street. Shiloh, I guess. <laughs> huh, it didn't. It didn't put copy it. All right, so twenty. Let's see. Twenty-one forty-seven Shiloh, and that was where was it? Um, Port. I think you said Charlotte Park, didn't you? Yeah, right on it. That's because we're all talking. We're not, we all stopped talking, Mark. <laughs> That's you right there. Oh, huh, look. See, I recognize yep. the driveway. Remember the the red driveway? Oh, sure. There's a red driveway. It's taking a little bit to update. That's funny. <laughs> I'm getting his brooms ready. How come there's no Jeep in the driveway? Well, that driveway in red. I think I'm looking at the wrong one. No, that that's the that's the right one. It just looks different. Yellow house. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Wait, there's a Jeep in the driveway. That's the bad thing about Google. You never know when they're coming by. Oh, I know. Now, he may have just been moving in. Although, that's a, that's a plumber. Okay. That's pretty funny. Yeah, you know, this looks like a great place for UFO sightings. <laughs> Look at the woods. He can go off road. He can do like Wayne does. He can just, in in this case, he can just go across the street and be off road. That's funny. He said that's an old picture. And same thing. If I I've zoomed in around my house, and the picture's got to be at least three years old. Oh yeah. So, yeah, I'm in I'm in the same boat. He is. Some of these pictures are really old. Can you imagine how much money uh, Google spent uh, for nothing other than just fuel? Yeah, no joke. Did you see what Kurt put on there? That's creepy, you stalker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of fun. <laughs> hey, we know where Tony does with his ass with our addies. <clears throat> yeah, I did that with Wayne. Uh, my goodness, the uh, Christchurch, New Zealand is a, or Christ's Church, New Zealand is just beautiful. I was looking at some of the architecture and the, the layout of the streets, and that is this really beautiful country. It was very flat where he was, but in, uh, I think, uh, within probably an hour of, or less from his house, you could be in the mountains. It was, uh, um, I mean, I could tell from the street views there that it was uh, quite nice. It's a shame that they're going through so many, um, so many um, earthquakes and aftershocks. Oh, I know. And it's really funny because, you know, where where <laughs> Wayne is, the first time I ever was looking at Wayne's profile, I, you know, I saw he lived in Christ Church. I thought, well, hell, he's got to be a he's got to be a preacher or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a a town full of uh, full of preachers. But you know, yeah, I, I know in different different parts of the world, different cultures. But you know, the the more. The more we learn about the other folks, the the more it just seems that we're all the same. Certainly, uh, the same as far as our love for the Jeep Cherokees. My you, wife's a minister. <laughs> you know, I found I, I, I didn't I didn't know this until last Saturday yeah. <clears throat> that uh, Wayne wasn't the one that changed his avatar to a submarine. No, that was uh, that was Matt. 
Yeah, Matt told me. Uh, told me he says uh, that that could be arranged. <laughs> he told him yeah, it could be arranged, and it showed up. <laughs> hey Wayne, can you guess who maybe had the idea of doing that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Wayne's still on here. I think Wayne's off. Well, it said it said it was chopping, and he kept kept getting kicked off. But uh, uh, he'll be talking to the computer later when he's um, whenever he's listening to the podcast. Oh yeah. Oh, did uh, Fireman Ray show up? Yep, sure he's, sure he's on here, too. Let's see. How do I put this thing back? It's a problem with doing something new. Yeah, Matt did mine, too, thanks to Rini and Paul. <laughs> well, there's a picture of your, um, at the time, new-to-you Jeep Cherokee. Um, I could possibly be one of the very first pictures ever taken of the Jeep. <laughs> yeah, I was digging around on the, the, the site tonight trying to find some pictures uh, so I could put up here on the uh, during the uh, the interview, and quite a few of the pictures that you put up are now are not available via photo bucket. You've moved them or deleted them. Well, see, it shouldn't be. I should still, every picture that I've had up, I've redone to make sure they were still in there. So you don't, do you have any of them with the, the, the TSLs on there? Um, I took some myself on Saturday, but I don't think that, uh, I don't know. That's, that's, those are ATs. No, those are the ATs. So no, I don't, uh, I don't have any with the, uh, I don't have any with the, um, uh, the tires that you have on there now. Uh, too bad, because that was that's some really good pictures of a Jeep when it's all uh, the way it looks now. It's really a huge difference between that and what I've got now. Well, I've got a week, because uh, the second half of the interview will be next week, and uh, we'll be able to get those pictures um, either from Photo Bucket or repost it or something and we can have them for next week's show so let me th- let me th- Jeez, th- about that, guys. let me throw in a couple of things here before we uh before we wrap this up did you know that xjtalk.com is on facebook just go to facebook.com slash xjtalk and friend us we're also on twitter twitter.com slash xjtalk are you interested in being a guest on xjtalk well, you can contact me via email, tony at xjtalk.com. That's tony at xjtalk.com. Hey, how would you like to advertise on XJ Talk Talk Show and reach a worldwide Jeep audience? Just send an email to advertise at xjtalk.com for more information. xjtalk.com. xjtalk.com. It's where you go when you're not off-road. Well, Rainey, I want to thank you very much for uh, not only uh, doing the interview, but being here on the phone with us. And uh, hopefully next week, you'll be able to join us again. And you, all of you guys should know that uh, if you want to be on the show, uh, love to find out who you are, your story, and share it with uh, the XJ Talk members and whoever is listening to the show. So if you, um, it, it doesn't, you don't have to be a vendor. You don't have to be somebody with a uh, hundred years of jeeping experience. Uh, just gotta be you and tell your story. Um, Marini does a great job with that. I was surprised that, uh, uh, Scott XJ four IV was such a great interview and that was just kind of an off the wall. Let's test the equipment, uh, type of show. So Rini, was there anything that you wanted to say before, uh, we uh, wrap this thing up? Well, not pretty much nothing much. I mean, um, y'all have a good night, and I guess we will talk to y'all next week as well. Excellent. So, um, I'm looking forward. I don't know about you, Rainy, but I'm looking forward to see what the weather is going to do. Because if we're going to get the bad weather, the the sleet and the snow and so on and so forth, it's supposed to be around noon tomorrow. What hey, Tony, th- I'm having a hard time hearing you over the music. I was I was just going to say, what do you think the uh, the likelihood of us getting the bad weather is going to be? 
I hope it's 100% likelihood. Matter of fact, um, next week when we are, we're on, I've found, I'm looking at my build thread, and there's some really good pictures of some of the stuff we were talking about next week, which we'll be talking about some building some bumpers and stuff like that. And I got some really good pictures in here of all that. Um, we, we should probably pull them up. And um, if we get the snow like we're supposed to, I'll make sure I get some pictures of my Jeep in the snow, and uh, I'll get them posted up as well, and let y'all show uh, you know show, show all of y'all who are used to seeing that what our idea of snow is, which it's nothing compared to what y'all's idea of it is. <laughs> Mark says, "Stay off the road, Tony." Mark, not only am I going to be on the road, I'll have the <clears throat> the smartphone set up so that I'm videotaping while I'm driving around, and I'll I'll have that up on the site. The site you can't get to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> I am too. I really am. But most of the time, whenever they're calling for someone like this, it doesn't pan out. Um, occasionally, on the tropical waves, hurricanes, and stuff like that, it will be as bad or worse than what they're predicting. But very seldom do we actually get the the freezing... Uh, rain, snow, sleet. Uh, more often than not, if it's a if it's a hard freeze with water associated, it's a um, uh, it's it's you know sleet and uh, ice, a lot of buildup of ice on things. Uh, hardly ever ever snow, so it's a big deal if uh, if we get the snow. So, again, guys, thank you very much for joining us. I think we'll, we may start. Uh, start the show about 30 or 40, 45 minutes late. We're still going to say it starts at 8, but everybody shows up about 30 or 45 minutes after the show starts. You know who you are. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for joining. And don't forget, you can uh, listen to these things on iTunes. So if you miss it, you don't have to. 